What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're gonna look at for loops in Go. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at for loops. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at for loops in Go. And Go is kind of weird. It only has one loop, the for loop. It doesn't have a while loop. It doesn't have other types of loops you may see in other programming languages, just the one loop, which I don't know, it's kind of weird, but uh, <laughs> for loop is a very familiar loop, but Go at least treats the for loop like you would expect it to in other programming languages. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Go series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm just calling it for.go, and it's our basic Go starter code that we always have. And let's just knock out a for loop. So we start out calling for, or a for loop, right? And then we need a counter to keep track of things. I'm gonna call it I, that's just sort of, you know, standard. And we're gonna use our shorthand here, or you don't even need a space, either way. And I'm gonna start it at zero. And there's three sections of a for loop, as in most programming languages, the counter, the condition, and then the increment. So here's our counter, i equals zero, and let's create a condition. So let's say as long as i is less than five, we wanna keep looping, right? And then every time we loop, we just wanna increase the count by one. So we'll just go i plus plus, right? Now, what do we wanna do while this thing is looping? Well, that's what we put inside these brackets. So let's just print out the, the counter and just see what's going on here. So let's go fmt.println, and we just wanna print out the i. So let's save this and head over to our terminal. I'm in my C go stuff directory and let's run go run and then the name of our file 4.go. And when we do, it just prints out to the screen zero, one, two, three, four. Why? Well, it starts at zero because our counter starts at zero and it says, hey, is zero less than five? Yes, it is. So print it onto the screen and then increase the counter by one. So now I becomes one. Is one less than five? Yes, it is. Print it to the screen, increase it. One becomes two becomes three, becomes four, is four less than five, yes it is, print it to the screen, increase it by one, now our counter is five. Loop through it again, is five less than five? No it's not, so the whole thing stops, right? Basic for loop, basic loop behavior, very easy and, uh, and pretty simple. So that's a basic for loop. Now a lot of times you're gonna wanna loop over things such as an array. So let's go looping an array. And this is just a little bit different than looping over arrays in other programming languages that you may be familiar with. So let's start out, let's just create a real quick array. So I'm gonna call it names. And we wanna say, eh, let's say there's three names in our array, right? And it's gonna be a string. And inside of here, I could just put John, April, and let's say Wes. So here's our array. We wanna loop through this array and print out each item in the array, right? Basic loop stuff. Right, so let's create a loop, so let's go four. Now here's where it gets a little weird. You have to designate the index number of the array. Remember index numbers for arrays start at zero, so John is zero, April is one, Wes is two, zero, one, two. So to do that, we create a variable. Call it anything you want, and I'm just gonna call it index, right? And now we wanna also reference the thing inside of here. So I'll call this one name, right? Because we're pulling out a name each time, right? So to loop over an array, we use the range keyword. So let's up here looping an array with the range keyword. And here to do that, we just use the little shorthand and we just call range. Now, what do we wanna loop through? Well, we wanna loop through our names array. And then what do we wanna do? Well, let's just fmt.println and let's print out both the index and the name. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, see what's going on here. Let me clear the screen here. And here's from our first one. So from here down is the new one. So zero, John, one, April, two, Wes. Now, what happens if, for instance, we leave out index here? We just wanna print out the name. Well, if we try and do this, we're gonna get an error. It's gonna say, hey, wait a second, you have this other variable index, you've declared it, but you're not using it, right? So if you wanna just print out just the names or just the index number for that matter, you could come up here and instead of defining this here, and creating a variable, you just use an underscore. So for underscore and name, now we can print out the name. So if we save this, head back over here and run this guy again, 
Here we see it just prints out the name, John, April, and West. And likewise, like I said, you could do the same thing for name, right? If you wanted to instead do index, and we want to print out the index. I probably want to spell this right. It, so, so if we save this and run it, we see down here, it just prints out those index numbers, 0, 1, and 2. So instead of doing that, I'm going to, of course, do name, change this back to name. And so, of course, now this will just print out name. So those are the basics of the for loop. Pretty straightforward. You know, this sort of syntax right here is common with a lot of for loops in most programming languages. The only weird thing is having to do this range thing where you have to do these underscores. I'm not sure I've seen that before. Definitely don't have to do something like that in Python or Ruby or even PHP, but still not that difficult and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com and I'll see you in the next video.